The Veterans of Foreign Wars, or the VFW, dates back to 1899, and today there are over 1.7 million members. And the most popular activity at the VFW? Well, it's hanging out at the canteen, where they serve local subs and grub. And at the VFW Post in Cranston, Rhode Island, Mike's Kitchen is famous for their polenta. And we took a trip there to learn how it's made. That's right. So I have to say, I never expected to have one of the best Italian-American meals of my life at a VFW <laughs> in Cranston, Rhode Island. But there it was. Mike Lebazar has been the chef at Mike's Kitchen for over 30 years, and one of the true standouts on the menu is the polenta. It arrives at the table as a big, thick yellow brick coated in red sauce, and you think this is going to be a lead sinker. But then you cut into it, and it's light and fluffy. You get a little sweetness from the cornmeal, a little tanginess from the cheese, and it's just some of the most amazing polenta I've ever had. So here in front of you, I have two products. One is labeled polenta, and the other is simply labeled cornmeal. Now if you touch both of them, you can see that the polenta is much coarser than the cornmeal. And what we found through testing is that we wanted the finer grind on the cornmeal because it absorbed more moisture during cooking and was better able to hold that brick shape that we were after to be more like Mike. So we're going to make polenta, not use polenta. All right. <laughs> okay, so let's start cooking. I have four tablespoons of butter that I've melted down in two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Okay. And to that, I'm going to add two smashed garlic cloves. And we're just going to lightly toast those cloves and get them nice and brown. And we just want to really perfume the oil. Almost give it like a garlic kiss, a peck <laughs> on the cheek. And I know she's using butter and olive oil. And why is that? We like the flavor of the combination of fats. Oh, OK. This will cook for about four minutes until it's nicely toasted and infuses that oil mixture. Mm -hmm. And you smashed the garlic rather than mince it, because if you mince the garlic, it would release more flavor. Right. It'll be a little bit too sharp and a little too aggressive for this dish. Just a kiss. Right. OK, Julia, you can see that the garlic is nicely brown. Mm, smells good. Yeah, and so we're just going to remove that. And you can save this for later. Oh, I'd eat, eat that. Alone, eat alone on your couch or <laughs> ward off vampires. And now we're going to add seven cups of water. One and a half teaspoons of salt. And one half teaspoon of black pepper. We'll just bring this mixture to a boil before we whisk in the cornmeal. Water is boiling, so we can go ahead and slowly whisk in the cornmeal. It's important to add this cornmeal in a slow, steady stream because you don't want it to clump up. Whisking constantly, I'm just going to kind of shake it in. I'm actually surprised at how fragrant that water smells. I mean, with the garlic and the pepper and a little bit of that butter, you can really smell it. Welcome to flavor country. <laughs> we have this all whisked in, and we can turn the heat up and bring it to a boil. And that happens pretty quickly. Okay, and now we can reduce the heat to medium low. We want to let this simmer for about 20 minutes. During that time, the moisture will drive off and it will get thicker and the polenta will get tender. But you definitely want to stay here and stir this every few minutes because it does have a tendency to stick to the bottom of the pot. All right, Joel, you can see that the polenta's thickened up nicely. Mm -hmm. and so we're ready to go ahead and kill the heat and we could stir in one and a half cups of grated pecorino cheese. Again, to be like Mike, we had to add an ample amount of cheese, and we wanted the sharpness of the cheese to really come through. And then we're also going to stir in a quarter cup of half and half. And we'll just whisk those two in until combined. Oh, now that's looking good. You know, Julia, when we first had this polenta at Mike's Kitchen, we assumed, we swore that there were eggs in it because it was so light and fluffy. Oh, okay. So we actually called the restaurant and said, hey, I've got a food allergy to eggs. <laughs> you did not. This is hardcore journalism. Yeah. <laughs> These are the lengths we go That's to. That's funny, <laughs> Brian. Did you use a different voice, too? <laughs> yeah, I changed my voice when I go in there. <laughs> I wear a disguise. Hi. Okay. They said it was safe, so, <laughs> you know, but this is, these are the links we go to to figure out a recipe. <laughs> All right, we're ready to go ahead and drop it into this 8-inch square baking pan that we've greased lightly. So, Julia, if you want to scrape it while I hold. Sure. All right, no polenta left behind. No lumps, either. No lumps. Good job. How are your arms doing? They're good. <laughs> All done. Great. OK, so we'll let this chill on the counter for about two hours to come to room temperature. Then we'll drop it in the refrigerator for about three hours to chill fully, because we want it to set up like a nice thick brick. While the polenta is chilling, we can turn our attention to the sauce. And the sauce in Mike's Kitchen is very smooth, slightly thick, and a little bit sweet. Really complements the polenta well. Like most sauces, we're going to start with onions as the base. We're going to heat up one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil over medium heat. And when that's nice and shimmering, we're going to do something a little bit unusual. We're going to add one onion that's only been halved, not diced. We're going to add that cut side down in the oil. 
and we're gonna cook that until it's nicely brown, which takes about four minutes. This is just going to impart a little bit of caramelization from the onion, but again, like the polenta with the garlic, we're not trying to overwhelm the sauce with onion flavor. While the onion continues to brown, we're gonna turn our attention to the other sauce ingredients. And for this sauce, we're using two canned tomato products. The first is canned tomato sauce, which is great because it comes with its own blend of spices and herbs and has a nice flavor. However, alone, it was too assertive. So we needed to thin it out with something. So we decided to puree one can of whole peeled tomatoes. So we'll add this to the blender. That's a small can, a 14 ounce can? Right, 14 and a half ounce can. And we'll just puree this for about 30 seconds. Okay, so the tomatoes are nicely pureed. We'll turn our attention back to the onions and I wanna show you how nicely brown they are. See how they... Oh yeah. Okay, now we can go ahead and add all of our tomato products. The tomato sauce. You wanna grab Ooh. the blender there. That's a hot pot. <laughs> the pureed tomatoes. And next we're going to add a half cup of grated pecorino cheese. Same cheese that we have in the polenta. To that I'm going to add one and a half tablespoons of sugar. Now this is kind of unusual for us because we typically don't add sugar to tomato sauces. Mm -hmm. But again, like Mike, his tomato sauce was a little bit sweet and it actually really works well with the polenta here. So All right, I'm gonna trust you. Three quarters of a teaspoon of salt and one half teaspoon of garlic powder and three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And the reason why we add the oil here at the end is because we really want to taste it. And we're going to give that a stir just to incorporate all those ingredients. And then we'll bring it up to a boil, then reduce the heat to medium low, and let it simmer until it thickens up nicely and the flavors meld, and that takes about 15 minutes. Okay, Julia, here we have our chilled polenta. Oh, I wanna to touch it too. Oh, it's pretty hard. Yeah, very solid. So we can remove this plastic, and we're going to turn it out onto our cutting board. So we need to cut it into six equal portions. Just do a little voodoo on top of it. <laughs> Et voila. Okay, now we need to cut this into our six equal portions. We'll start off by splitting it once down the middle. And give that a 90 degree turn, and they'll go into thirds here. You could use a ruler if you wanted to, but I am super <laughs> stubborn, and I refuse to. <laughs> okay, we could just transfer the polenta to a greased piece of parchment paper. So that is a portion size. Right, right. And you are more than welcome <laughs> to have two if you don't think that's enough. <laughs> no, but when you called it a brick earlier, now I see what you're talking about. Okay, so we're going to blast this in a 375 degree oven for about 30 minutes, just to heat it all the way through. Okay, Julia, here we go. Well, they held their shape, which is impressive. And that's the most important part of the recipe. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times you bake polenta and they sort of turn sort of into goops on the platter. And it turns into a big pile of cement, mm -hmm. not the brick. <laughs> okay, so can I portion some out for you? Please. Is this enough here? <laughs> Would you like two? <laughs> One's good for me. Okay. And then at Mike's, they like sauce. They do, huh? They like a lot of <laughs> sauce. Ooh. <laughs> My fork kind of just glided right through it. Mmm, that is so good. It's one of my favorites. Oh, so wow. Taste the tanginess of the cheese. Yeah, it's so fluffy. That is something. So to make this Cranston VFW style polenta, start with regular cornmeal and cook it in water lightly seasoned with butter, olive oil, and kiss of garlic. Add a decent amount of Pecorino Romano, along with a little half and half, and let it set up in the fridge for at least three hours. Finally, slice the polenta into bricks and bake it for half an hour and serve with a simple yet slightly sweet tomato sauce. And there you have it, from Cook's Country, a new recipe for fluffy baked polenta. You can find this recipe, all the recipes from this season, along with our tastings, testings, and select episodes at our website, cookscountry.com. This is delicious. Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>